And that's the problem. Y you know what they say with the, the winning coach is always right. In this case, we can say the losing coach is always wrong. Hi guys, we talk Ajax here, Game Talk. Utrecht against Ajax, 2-0. We lost a very important semi-final Dutch Cup game. Today, I will discuss this with Ajax. Hi guys. Ajax, 2-0. Yeah. A loss. We're not in the best period, um, so we're not having a good uh, run uh, the last few weeks. But surely, you and I thought, or maybe I thought, that we would have a chance today. Maybe the players will, you know, like pick themselves up and show that they really want to make it work. Yeah. What do you think of the game today? It's uh, getting hard to swallow uh, all these losses lately because it's so pathetic. I, I don't even know how to analyze it anymore. Uh, we we nearly don't get any chances during the match. Um, the, the the field play is pathetic. Uh, the combinations don't work. Uh, Ten Hag is keeps switching around every position within the team. Blind suddenly is playing six again. Uh, Alvarez is a center back. All of a sudden, Ekelkamp. Who do not, who does not play uh, much lately, starts all of a sudden. And I know certain games in the, in the cup you start with other players, but this is a serious game. It's a semi-final. It's against Utrecht. It's always difficult. I do not understand the decisions that uh, Ten Hag make. Do you think it's worrisome that uh, Ten Hag is making these big and drastic changes in this? Um, it, I mean, in March, uh, we're, we're, I already discussed it with uh, Papi Mento, um, that we're already, best, we're already like in, uh, let's say in the final uh, of the season, yep. you know, the final month of the season, and he's still shuffling a lot of players. Yep. And uh, partly you can argue, yes, we had a lot of injuries. Um, the people who came back from injuries, they're still not in form. Um, but it seems like this Ajax is a totally different Ajax that we saw before, a few months before ago, the winter before break. the winter break, basically, uh, yes, except for the last two weeks, but yeah. until that. But then yeah. we we started getting a lot of injuries, yeah, and so, fatigue. Yeah. So what what is it that makes Ajax so much different than what we are? We we used to see them play in the first few months in 2019. It's it's I think um, a combination of um, a few factors. Uh, first of all, I think a lot of injuries and uh, that uh, it's difficult to uh, maintain team chemistry and form if you have so many injuries to fill in every time. Um, as I discussed like months ago, uh, Ten Hag not playing different players when he has the chance uh, makes these players uh, difficult to fit in when there's an injury because they do not play with the team a lot and they are expected of them that they are there immediately. Mm -hmm. um, this is one thing. Uh, also, I think it has to do with confidence also. Of, and um, of the team? Of the, of of the players, players, of the players. Mm -hmm. uh, certain um, key players do not perform. For example, Tadic. The Tadic from after the winter break uh, and compared to the Tadic last season and a little bit also before the winter break, it's a totally different ball game. Mm -hmm. uh, also, I think um, it's been clear, more clear as, uh, as as ever that Ten Hag does not know what he's doing at the moment. I think all these switching around and all these uh, different players on different position, it shows that he doesn't know what to do anymore. I think he's panicking a little bit and he's trying to force it by playing other players in other position, but I think it's more deep than that. I think he has to coach and he has to um, talk with the players and go go deeper. It's not only the the right players on the right position. The, the, I mean, the motivation yeah, and, and but, but this week, this week, let me just uh, yeah. tell you something about that. This week, Tadic said he's going to talk the, with him. He, they're going to talk. Yeah, and even before the game. Um, Ten Hag admitted that he was talking also to other players like Blind or like Ziyech, etc. So he did talk to these players before going into this game. Clearly, no effect because um, for me, there was no difference between today and the game against AZ. It's disorganized, uh, no team chemistry, a lot of wrong and, and stupid mistakes uh, when we have the possession. Um, we give a lot of spaces. So yeah. today, Alvarez and Martinez, honestly, I don't think you can blame either one of those. 
Of course, you can say, you can argue that Alvarez's second uh, goal yeah. that we conceded yeah. the penalty, not smart to, to make exactly. that tackle. Exactly. But apart from that, they had to cover so much ground and, and um, repair so much uh, wrong passes in the opponent's half that it no team can, can sustain this, you know, throughout the game. So the tactics are wrong. And, I agree. And what I don't understand, you mentioned this also already, why is Blaine put back to the number six this position? This makes me so angry. Why is he putting him on the sixth position again? Because we started this in the beginning exactly. of the season. Exactly, and it didn't work out. He was poor at the sixth position. He can be terrific at the center back position. Why do you put him back on a position that he didn't perform in any, almost any match in the preseason and early season? Why? Look, I do understand, again, I do understand that Blint is coming from... Uh, from from his heart condition yeah. he hasn't played for a few weeks um playing at such a high level if you don't perform and you don't do anything for a few weeks yeah i mean it's a very um it, you, you feel it you know it's not something you can just switch on switch no. off like that i understand that what i do miss with ten Hag, and i'm not talking only about blind but also with tadic as you gave you know the example you mm -hmm. gave even ziash etc mm -hmm. i'm wondering how can you how can you be a coach that doesn't take actions when when certain players, whether it's key players, your captain, whoever, if they don't perform, they don't deliver, they have to be consequences. I agree. Um, and uh, this is something now that's being it's 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 starting to um, it's starting to hit the team because the the the, the results are showing now. You know, yeah. it's not one player that's not playing well. No, all the key players basically right now are not performing. Um, in the media. And I'm not, I'm not saying, by the way, just to say mm -hmm. something, I'm not saying that you should bench all the key players, no. but I'm saying you should take actions because it's not fair also to the other players. Like what did Traore did wrong, uh, do wrong in the recent weeks? Every time he has played this season, he has been more than decent. Why doesn't he play the last few weeks? You know, you know what it is? Uh, Ten Hag's um, uh, coaching style is catching up on him. He needs other players in other positions now, but they do not fit in at the moment because they didn't play that much exactly. or not frequently. Mm -hmm. It's one week, it's Grafenberg. Next week, it's Traoré somewhere. Then it's Eklekamp. Then he plays with Eiting. Today, today's uh, second and third substitution. Marine and, and Danilo. Danilo. So, you know what I mean? If you choose to uh, include certain players from the bench, make sure that your bench becomes a quality bench. So play them more frequently, play, give them more minutes. Also in the, in the a part of the season when we scored a lot of three, four, five, zero games. If he gave more minutes to those players then, then he could have used them better now. Yeah, He doesn't do that. So his own coaching style is catching up to him. Also, what I saw, what I read in the media uh, this week, you, you cannot be sure if it's a rumor or not. They say Ten Hag is like a, a certain uh, style of coach that he doesn't do like man handling uh, very well uh, within the squad. Yeah. So he's like more of an authority figure than he's within He's standing within the squad. He's not really a people's kind of manager. Exactly. And uh, this is breaking uh, up the team also. That's, that is the rumor that um, the, the the players need this sometimes, but he cannot deliver to uh, Well, uh, this. it's true because especially young players, and yeah. we have a bunch of those, yeah. they need some kind of communication. They need some kind of, you know, like tap on the back, yeah. like, okay, you will get your chance. Hey, keep doing what you're doing. And I, I do understand, I mean, I don't know Ten Hag personally, of course, but he seems like that type of guy that's yeah. a bit more authority and yeah. a bit more distant yeah. you know, to the players. Yeah. But it's even worse because what you're saying, only certain players, maybe 12 or 13 players, are his first choices. Exactly. And the rest, they barely play. But, yeah. but, but he takes them all the time yeah. also to the games. Like exactly. Marine, every time I see the bench, Marine is there. Yeah. Yeah, and that is the problem. Y you know what they say with the, the winning coach is always right? In this case, we can say the losing coach is always wrong. And why? Um, it isn't a, a, a situation from the last weeks. There are certain things that we discussed just uh, before uh, we talked about this. What is wrong with his coaching ability? He doesn't include the players early in the season. He doesn't switch around with players a lot. He doesn't have a plan B when uh, with his tactical approach. All these things, you need to have practiced it when it's necessary. Mm -hmm. Like now in the season when it's not, when they're not performing well, you need certain 
uh, stuff that you can rely on. And because he lacked that in the early season, he's getting the, the bill for it now. Okay. So now we talked about the man management, right? Yeah. This is one type of yeah. coaching um, strategy that is coming to bite him basically in, in the, the you know, exactly. Yeah. The so, in, exactly. <laughs> so there's also something else I want to yeah. discuss. Um, what has been also obvious, and you also mentioned this, is the little chances that we're creating after the winter break. Yeah. One of the very um, uh, evident games, like the game that really showed how how it was, was the Hitofi game when we played away. Yeah. I thought we had only one, one shot off and target, was off target well. as well. Yeah. But also against, okay, I said maybe we had a lot, uh, a bit more chances, but do, those were only like free kicks or corner kicks. Today again, I mean, of course we get to them to their half, the opponent's half, but still we don't really create open chances, you know? If you see that you're struggling as a team to create open chances, and that's something that I want to ask you because before the game, they were arguing, the analysts were arguing like, Ten Hag seems also like that kind of coach that he wants to keep doing the same over and yeah. over and over yeah. again, yeah. no matter if it's working or not, which means he's not flexible also. He isn't. And you can question like last season, it was a big season, a great season, different players, but he had the same approach like most of the games mm -hmm. and it worked. Yes. So was it exceptional coaching ability back then? Or did his plan A suffice for the season? He yeah. didn't have to use his plan B. So now he has a, a, a worse season and other stuff is expected from him. Yes. Your, your, your true quality begins to shine when, when you have a difficult uh, period. Exactly. And he fails to deliver time and time again. It's not only the coach's fault, the players do not deliver also. But what can you blame the coach for? Like not doing the right things earlier in the season. And it's biting him in the ass now. Exactly. So it's a, it's it's like, uh, um, yeah, you have to calculate all those things, put it uh, put it together, and then you can uh, like give him, give him a grade how he's doing now. And I think he's performing poor. And he needs to step up or do something different. And not only with the players, he needs to talk with the squads, uh, get the heads uh, uh, to the right position, everything, shoulders uh, and, and the needed, go for it, you know? Mm -hmm. And you do not see it within the match. You do not see the confidence with the players. They are like arguing with each other. Sieg is always cursing a little bit the last games. I don't know if you uh, have yeah, seen yeah, it on the, yeah, on the, yes, on the I TV. Have, I have. So this is a sign that there's something wrong with in the mentality of the squad and he needs to solve this do you think he will be able to solve this i don't know because like i said before he's probably not the man management kind of uh, coach he's not a who's hitting for example who's always within uh, the squad well with the one of the things the the telegraph so the dutch newspaper came with an article this week uh, again which they also mentioned before that alfred schroeder who was assistant yeah, manager last yeah, yeah. Uh, year yeah now coach hoffenheim. of hoffenheim yeah he was instrumental uh, link between Ten Hag and the players. Yeah. And one of the arguments now is yes, that uh, now Schroeder is being missed because there is no chemistry between the coach and the players. Maybe that's a bit far-fetched. We don't know about these things, but it could be. It but, could be but the case. Who, who's responsible for assigning uh, an assistant coach? Mainly the head coach, right? He can he can tell like but also, Overmars and also with Overmars exactly. And but he can he can uh, his preferences. He can say to Overmars, of "I course. would like to work together with uh, uh, how, how's this guy's name? Christian Paulson now. Paulson and Reisiger. Uh, and Reisiger. Both of them. But yes. both of those. Um, well, well, usually yes. But uh, Overmars and Van der Sar they have a say as well because don't of forget the, don't forget the situation with Boss a few years yeah, ago. Yeah. He didn't want to work with um, you know Bergkamp. Uh, no, it was um, not Bergkamp. It was um, what's his name again? I forgot his name with the glasses. Oh, um, Henny Spikerman. Spikerman. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. So um, that was that was something they didn't want to you know uh, mm -hmm. give uh, give him his uh, uh, his own uh, assistant manager. Or, and then things uh, just escalated and then Dortmund came and he left. So coming back to the situation with Ten Hag, I just want to know from your perspective, do you think this is a crisis situation that we will solve? 
what 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 does your gut feeling tell you my gut feeling tells me this is this crisis isn't over yet um we have herefein away that is traditionally a harsh game for ajax yes we get utrecht away still we have feyenoord away still yes correct. those matches are not easy when you are in form well looking at the fixtures i have looked at the fixtures of course march i've called it march madness, madness yeah uh, but that's because very important games are coming up this month and it's a do or die basically for Ajax because yeah. if we already started losing two games, if we don't pick ourselves up and we don't do perform well in this month, I think we're throwing away everything. Everything I, we built I totally this agree. I think uh, as it stands now, it's more of a die uh, month than, than a do month because it is not even nearly close enough of the quality that you need. You do not even uh, create that many chances. And if you make, uh, um, if you compare, uh, two different games. You remember the game against Utrecht in the first half of the season? Yes. It was like gallery play and everybody was talking about that match. Yep. And then you see the match against Utrecht today. Yeah. And True. it's like totally different world, totally yes. different situation. True. And it's such a big gap between those two teams, how they're playing and how the quality is, that I really um, doubt that they can fix this in this short time frame. This should have been the match to 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 close the gap a little bit, and it's I didn't see any positives today that I can hold on to on what for I guess games. for the upcoming games yes. against Hirvain against Final that I think yes this convinced me that we can turn things around, and, and it's not even that we lost it's the way we played yes yeah okay. even if you if you <clears throat> if you lose but you create a lot of chances and you play well then you have something to hold on to but it was pathetic today again and we do not create we we do not deliver what would you do heading to the to the saturday game against hereveen if you were if you were the coach what would be the first thing you would do i would uh, schedule an emergency meeting uh, next thing uh, tomorrow morning uh, talk with the players even if you have to lock them up like 3 4 hours everybody has to say what's on their minds and you have to do uh, a crisis management and maybe even i know it's not um, something he does uh, uh, yeah he does uh, a lot but maybe change the the formation and and like like dick uh, does with with Feyenoord, he uh, he looks at what is the possibilities within the squad. He always does this with the teams that he coaches. He goes and back he, to and the foundation. He, he goes back to the foundation and he just uh, checks what is possible and what is the most, um, what is the best uh, situation for right now. What formation can team. we play for the best mm -hmm. at the moment? Mm -hmm. And maybe it's not like uh, the Ajax style, but maybe he has to think about, okay, I cannot arrange the midfield like I want it. Maybe I should switch things around a little bit until the confidence comes back. I yeah. don't know. Quickly on the players, yeah. the, the ratings. Um, who was the worst player in your uh, uh, Blind, team? Blind by far. And I don't know if you can blame Blind for it because Den Haag played him at the six and he does not perform at that position. Uh, I gave him a three. Um, I'm really fond of the guy, you know this, but today it was pretty poor. Okay, and, and who do you think performed decently? Uh, I, I only gave three um, Yeah, good ratings. Good ratings, two mm -hmm. sixes, Onana and, um, let me check. Uh, Tagliafico yeah. and I think Martinez played well he was one of the uh, few persons that had a good match I think yeah. okay all right let's hope uh, Ajax will uh, find their form I back. hope so too and let's hope they they listen to you that enough listens to you yeah but he, I, I, he schedules I, something I, tomorrow morning I, uh, I hope he listens to us but I, uh, I doubt it uh, we'll but um, yeah he should he should really talk with the players yeah thank you for sharing your thoughts yeah. thank yes, you i'll see you next me. time yes okay guys thank you for watching please let us know what you thought of the game please let us know what Ten Hag should do we'll see you next time thank you for watching bye guys